Hey, Melbourne. Um, my name is Carl Donnelly. I'm from the UK. Some of you are thinking, that's not allowed, is it? <laughs> Um, if you want to know how that works, I'm actually married to one of you people. Yeah. <laughs> if you're wondering who it is, uh, there's actually an envelope under one of your seats. <laughs> and um, at the end of my set, we'll be opening that and seeing who the lucky person is. <laughs> it's great to see so many people out. It's amazing, honestly, after the year we had. Like, does anyone remember when uh, we thought the film Cats was going to be the low point of 2020? <laughs> We might have missed the goal on that one. But um, it's, I, do you know what? I think there's actually one group of people we're going to look back quite fondly on. In the sense that it was a very polarised year, yeah? A lot of arguing. And actually, there was one group I think we could all join forces to hate, right? And that is that people that wore their masks just under their nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because essentially... If you're an anti-masker, you still think they're a sheep, yeah? Um, but if you're a pro-masker, you see the redundancy of what they're doing. Because wearing your mask there is essentially like wearing a condom over your bollocks. <laughs> you know, you're like, I'll put one on, but in the vicinity, you know? <laughs> Um, me, my wife and daughter had to actually do quarantine to get back into the country. And uh, some of you might have heard about quarantine from tennis players who described it as prison. And, uh, and I can probably give you a little insight. Um, I don't know much about prison, but I've never stayed in a four and a half star one, I'll say that. <laughs> but some of it is pretty tricky. Uh, I'll talk you through it. Um, they had limited alcohol, right? So yeah, get a load of this. I was only allowed six beers a day. I know, it's barbaric, right? <laughs> if, and some of you might have crunched the numbers already on that. Um, that means I was only allowed 84 beers <laughs> in my time in lockdown. What is this, Guantanamo Bay, mate? <laughs> I, um, I was actually ready for quarantine. I'd done lockdown, do you know what I mean? I don't know if anyone had a productive or healthy lockdown. I'll give you a little uh, look into my life. I developed piles for the first time. <laughs> Which, um, I don't know uh, if anyone's had piles. It basically means your ass itches forever. <laughs> and the good thing is, actually, I, um, I didn't have to go to the shop to buy cream. I could order it online. Although I did develop a motto during that period, and that was that technically, any cream is a pile cream if you just believe. Yeah. <laughs> Except tea tree antiseptic cream. <laughs> <laughs> Which means you'll have a cold bum hole for 24 hours. It was pretty bleak. I'm one of the few people that's experienced sort of it on both sides of the world, you know. And the UK was bleak, you know. Like, we had Christmas cancelled. I don't know if anyone heard about this. Like, and halfway through last year, we were watching you lot going, Melbourne's gone a bit crazy on this, mate. I think they're taking it a bit seriously. And then flash forward to the end of the year, while you lot were having brunch, and uh, we were stuck on coronavirus island. <laughs> we changed our tune, right? Because we had an official press conference from the government. They came out and said, uh, you're not allowed Christmas. The Prime Minister said, if you have Christmas dinners, the police will break them up. And everyone was upset, you know, it was a tragedy. Luckily for me, I'm from an Irish working class family, so I've actually never had a Christmas dinner not broken up by the police. So, um, guys, you've been great. Have a great night. I've been Carl Longley. Take it easy. Cheers. <laughs>